Hello again. So now we're moving on to solve equations. To start off, we have the addition principle. And you see a big wall of text in front of you. If you need to press pause at any point, do so. We're going to start off with a definition. I love definitions as you're slowly starting to learn. We have the first one, e whoa, equation. Uh, let's make it a little prettier. We have a math sentence with an equal sign. Equation, equal sign. What we've been seeing before when we just had to multiply or just add or just subtract or just divide is an expression. An equation will be pre-giving us an equation, which we have seen. We're just finally writing it down in words. The next one, solution. This is the one I'm most picky about. It has a certain way we have to write it. It's a value that makes the equation, the thing we're talking about before, true. We solve equations to find solutions. Now, more importantly, we're going to talk about the addition principle. I'm going to change the page, so if you need to pause, do so. We are going to be talking about where we are asked to solve. And let's start off nice. I'll be honest this time. The first one we're going to have is nice. We have x minus 3 equals 4. So the first thing we're noticing is that lovely equation sign. The addition principle pretty much says a lot of fancy stuff, and we're going to cut to the chase. In layman's terms, it says what we do to one side, we do to the other. Now, the word side is talking about sides of the equation. So I've identified my equation. That's my first step when I solve these things. And I draw a line, usually, just to kind of break it up. So I see the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. What I mean by that is I want to solve. I want to find what x is. Now, I can guess and check what x could be, or I could mathematically figure this out by getting x by itself. So currently, we have x minus 3. I don't like that. So I'm going to undo the subtraction by adding 3. Now, addition principle says... What we do to one side, so this is one side of the equation, we do the, to the other. And that's my poor English, so if you got to fix that to make it sound prettier, do so. I added 3 to this side. If I do that, then I have to add 3 to the other. Now, what's occurring here? Well, if I subtract 3 and add 3, I've undone it. So they cancel out. Gone. And all I'm left with is x equals... And 4 plus 3 is 7. So there is my solution. And I write x equals 7. What that means is if I were to plug this in, I can check. And I take 7, plug it in for x, minus 3. That should equal 4. Well, 7 minus 3 is 4, so it all checks out. So that's not too bad. You know, you're probably thinking, well, lady, I didn't see enough. So let's do another one, okay? Second problem. A little bit different. Let's say I have 5 plus, I don't know, let's say n equals 9. Now my first thing to do here is this is an equation because I have an equal sign. So I identify it. Now you see the two sides of the equation. You have the left hand side and you have the right hand side where just the 9 is. My goal is to solve for the variable. And the variable is whatever the unknown is. Who is n? I don't know. I'm going to find out, though. Now, if there's anything going on on the side where the n is, like I have 5 plus this n, well, I don't like that. I want n just by itself. That's how I solve for the variable. I'm going to undo the math, so to speak. I have 5 being added. So to undo it, I subtract. And you might be thinking, well, you saw that this was the addition principle. I should add things. Mm -mm. I'm just basically telling you, you can undo whatever's going on there. Here I'm adding or subtracting. Both are kind of the same concept to mathematicians. And I'll stress that later on to you. And I want to get rid of it so I can have the variable by itself. And 5 minus 5 is 0. That's gone. I don't have to worry about it. They cancel each other out. But what I do to one size equation... I must do the same to the other side. Now, I'm left with n. That's all that's left behind on the left-hand side. 
and 9 minus 5 is 4. So if I was in the guess and check world, we can check this by saying, okay, I have 5 plus something. Well, in this case, I found it. I said it was 4. Does that equal 9? Well, yeah, 5 plus 4 is 9, so that checks out. So I must have done this right. Now this gave me a systematic way to solve equations. That's just the addition principle. Now we're going to talk about the multiplication principle. Guess what? It says the same thing. It says what you do to one side, you do to the other. Now, to give you the fancy talk of the multiplication principle, let's start off with an example. And I lost my example, so I'm going to make up one. Let's say I have 3 times y equals, I don't know, 81. Okay? So, identify your equation. We're going to go through that same process again. So here's our two sides of the equation. I have 3 times y equals 81. I don't like that y has this 3 times it. I want just y. I want to know what y is. I don't care what 3 times y is. I want to know what y, just him. So I want to undo this 3 times the y. Well, the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Now, 3 divide by 3. Well, think what times 3 gets me 3? 1. Well, 3 divided by 3 is 1. And 1 times anything is still the same thing. So I'm left with y. I've undone the math, so to speak. And now I have y just by itself. And 81 divided by 3. Now, if you don't know that offhand, there is no shame to go in off to the side of your paper and say 3 divided into 81. Now, 3 times 2 is the closest I get to 8. That's 6. Subtract. I got a 2. Bring down the 1. And 3 times 7 is 21. I'm just testing you. It's not that I couldn't have done this on my own, right? Wink, wink. So now we got 27 is our final answer. So I'm betting 3 times 27 gets me 81. And you check that on your own. Make sure I'm not lying to you. All right. So that is it for how we solve equations. We've been guessing and checking beforehand, but now what we are going to do is this new thing where we undo the math. If we're multiplying, we undo it by dividing. The same thing is to be said, oh, let's do one more. Let's call it example number two. Let's say I have, I don't know, x divided by 5, and that equals, I don't know, 12. I'm making this up. So. I have x divided by 5. Well, here's my equation, and I want to undo division. Well, the opposite of division is multiplication. So I want to multiply by 5. Well, what I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other side. Now, that's me being sloppy. Normally, people rewrite it. It's up to you how you want to do it. If I multiply by 5 and divide by 5, that undoes it, that cancels out. Now I'm left with x equals, and you're going to have to help me out, 12 times 5. Now, I don't know my 5's table. I'm going to have to multiply it. 2 times 5 is 10. Carry the 1. 5 times 1 is 5, plus the 1 is 60. Okay, I knew that. 12 times 5 is 60. And there's our answer. So that means 60 divided by 5 must be 12. And that is it. I've got to stop this.